This is something that's in my head that I have to show you guys. Creating art, I feel, is like, is like alchemy. I can explain to you all I want, but what better way than to show you? What you create with your work, the inspiration, or how you move other people, that's what you leave behind. I got spray paint going through my veins. I spit tattoo ink. Artists like interpret and view the world differently from a lot of the other people. It's not always perfect in a, a perfect kind of way. It's intentional but random. Crazy elements interacting and you're really making something from like nothing. I can tell you that in elementary school, like we'd have little projects and we'd have to like draw little things. And then I realized as I was drawing, I thought everyone else was doing the same work. I thought, you know, everyone had the same capabilities. I guess as a naive kid, I might have been five, six years old. Then when you realize that your drawing look a whole lot better than everyone else's, you kind of realize that you have something different. My early memories are actually like probably being at my uh, dad's house when I was a little kid on the weekends and just passing a lot of time drawing. I grew up surrounded by art or creative stuff. I went to school for graphic design. That introduced me to photography and that really just clicked. Went to Art Design High School in New York City, which I heard is not even there anymore. I actually went to FIT. Uh, I studied illustration. I had to choose just one or two mediums. And I felt too confined by that. So uh, I went to a different school where I can kind of do a little bit of everything. I was drawn to drawing uh, bar like bare trees, like they're going way, way back, like a tree with no leaves on it and a barren landscape. I've always been the kid that paints on the windows for the Halloween art contest. I just started writing on everything at a young age. And uh, that's, that's what led to the graffiti. And then later on, writing on people. It's all about composition. And you just putting things together, no matter what medium you choose. Like, you know, even if you're taking a photo, like, it's all about placement. energy and potential in here, like this will create a hundred crazy images, you know? I am a little abrupt, so I feel like here I can take out all the crazy energy I have out. You know, some of these things I see more vividly and real than the world in front of me. sometimes feel really crazy, especially towards the end of a project. A lot of my broken glass work was done in times I was just really angry. That's where broken glass kind of came from, me destroying things. If you just let it be, then it grows by itself. Dripping or splashing, you know, let it be alive. You let whatever happened, happen, kind of let it be free. Getting, getting that, that precision and speed down, you know, it's, it takes time. You can get cleaner lines on glass than you can with canvas, because canvas eats paint. What glass it does is just sit right on top, so you kind of get a lot of sharper edges, you can get a lot finer with details. I wanted to return the process to something that was hands-on and, you know, get, get a little messy. When I paint in my studio, I usually make like three paintings, four paintings, or two, I don't know, I always doing a bunch of stuff at the same time, so I don't feel claustrophobic with a piece, like, oh, I have to do it, like, I, I can't do that. You're an artist, great, that's your talent, but they want to know who you are as well, like more of a personality. They say the tattoo gods are always watching, you know? I've had people tattoo my art with Like, that blew me away. These people are signing a life contract with you. <laughs> You gotta think ahead with tattoos because they have to stand the test of time. There's something really gratifying on a whole nother level about creating a, 
large art that's in a public space like on the street. It's great when you do work for yourself and you have it at home and maybe you show in a gallery, it's open for a month and but when you have stuff on the street all the time, it's just, it's there all the time. And so many people that would never go into a gallery can see it. And, um, and I love that. It's just big stuff, you know, it just makes more of an impact visually. So natural satisfaction from that, you know. I think I learn a lot about myself when I'm doing work, you know, like uh, sometimes I surprise myself. I do better than I expected whenever I stop thinking. No matter what happens in my life, it's sort of the one constant. As long as there's, you know, a pen or paper around, I could always go back to that. Well, yeah, it does give me clarity on myself because it's a good time to think. It's, it's definitely a good feeling. It's rewarding and uh, a moment of peace for sure. It, it kind of causes it to causes stress when, you know, people go over me or whatever. So, when I, you know, beef, graffiti beef. I'm really attracted to the physical feeling of painting or drawing. You know, the feeling I feel in my hand, like when the pen touches the paper, when the brush touches the canvas, I really, that's one of, one of the things I love most. <laughs> that's like, I already make me smile. <laughs> I should feel like when I, finish, when I finish a piece, it's, uh my baby, I'm done. It's just the most happy time. It's, it's the orgasmic, it's the best. It's almost like the difference between sex with and without a condom. Welcome to my new living room. I got the praying mantis because the female eats the male after they, they mate. Chew them up and spit them out. It's very symbolic. There is a big love element, I think, involved in my art. This is one of the benefits of getting in early on this whole gentrify thing. I mean, I put my heart to it, and I hope people can see that and maybe just feel the same way, hopefully. Or just feel some way. This doesn't even exist. That's why we're here. This isn't even real. Look down, look down. Just look down on it. Nah, I just wanna leave my mark, you know? It's like a, a stain in the earth. <laughs> like my, it's like my hieroglyphics, you know what I mean? My, my cave drawings, the modern primitive, you know? There's only fragments of artwork produced, so when I'm making art, I can't help but think of like, you know, if someone digs up some 2000 era culture, you know, in some archeological site that maybe they'll find, you know, some pit where some of my sketchbooks or paintings are. A thousand years from now, I just say that dude was ill. Whoever did that was nasty. <laughs> I'll be happy with that. I'll be smiling from heaven. I'm such a dreamer, such a thinker that what ifs would drive me crazy the, the rest of my life. Some people just live with regrets and I can't be the guy who has that what if. I think that creating or making art is easier than dealing with the guilt and the grief of not making art. I don't do it to, to be big and famous. Of course, I want to get paid for my work, but at the same time, you guys can pay me for my work. I don't care if you ever, never know who the hell I am. Finding the avenues of turning what you enjoy doing into something that can generate income. You know, and a lot of times, that in itself takes a lot of creativity. When I have an image that is stuck with me for a while, that's when I know I have to create it, when it like sort of hangs in my head. The best way to know you're inspired is when you have no choice but to do something. You can sit on the couch with, oh, I'm inspired to do it, but if you're not getting up to do it, how inspired are you really? When I'm hit with an idea for a painting or a series or a project, once I start making it, it becomes like a burden. All things fall behind social relationships, hygiene, feeding myself, working becomes the utmost importance. It's like this insane, like, has to happen now moment for me. 
It's like I have to do something with it in that second. That's how those images hit me. I didn't think about them. They just... There are times I've literally dreamt about art pieces. I've woken up at 6.30 in the morning to start them. Two o'clock in the morning. I call that like the golden hour. A lot of people will become an artist because they'll have like this rush of inspiration. They'll have these ton of ideas. You know, they'll, they'll come a point where you sort of like, you did it and now it's done and now you're dry and you don't know where to go from there and you're sort of lost. Like, how did I even get here to begin with? And if you still have the passion to create, then you gotta keep going at it. And it's hard when you don't have any ideas. If I'm in a depressed state or like mad or upset, I, the last thing I wanna do is create. If you have to force yourself like so much, it's probably not the right time. If something's not working, like you gotta change something drastically, you gotta change it right away. Change should be immediate and flamboyant. I welcome roadblocks because they force you to do something else. They force you to think about something completely different than you never would have thought of before. And once your eye is set on something so much and you can't do it, your mind has to go somewhere else. So embrace that somewhere else. I created things that stem from my frustration and inability to create work, thereby creating more work and more inspiration for myself. to think what people think too much that uh that's that occupies too much time in my and other people's mind and i really don't have time for that it's dangerous to go into a work with too much intent it's really when i remove the any idea of deadlines and things like that is really when the best stuff happens whenever i make art i always try to like go back to things that are related to me or things that i know about there's that zone that is really hard to describe, that a lot of artists can understand that when you're in it, you're in it and you just go with it. At the end of the day, it comes from somewhere. I can't tell you where yours comes from, so. I don't know, you're in your house, you're reading the newspaper and you see a picture in the newspaper or you read something or you're reading a book or somebody says something funny and I was like, ooh, we have to write that down, we can make that, da da da, -da something. Like who was inspired to kind of capture the moment on video? Had they never been doing that, we'd probably never be sitting here. When did I consider myself? When did I consider myself an artist? It really comes down to what defines that. Is it somebody who just enjoys doing creative things, or is it somebody who makes a living off of it? That's a good question. Um, In high school, I was put into an intensive painting class where I had to produce a certain amount of paintings within a deadline, and I had never met that sort of pressure before. I considered myself an artist far many years before I actually thought I was good at something. In certain ways, it's really, I think, more of a mindset. At the end of it, when I came out with this, like, large collection of paintings, stuff I never thought I ever could come up with. I think that was probably the point where I like really felt fit to the title. The night that all of my gear was stolen out of the trunk of my friend's car. I didn't have a nice car at the time, but I had, uh, you know, a couple of thousand dollars invested in my equipment. That was what I was using to make money. That was what I was using to make art. And having it stolen and having it taken away from me was a reinforcement of the fact that I know that this is what I want to do because I will replace it. And this is getting kicked in the teeth and I'm going to pop back up and I'm going to go fix this even if it has to come out of my own pocket. Uh, it was like a revelation. It didn't stop me or, or, or knock me back. It propelled me forward knowing that it made me want it more. I know a lot of people who are artists and don't like to call themselves artists. I frown upon that. I hate saying that I'm an artist. I guess it's cool because I guess that's the kind of lane that I'm in. I guess people, hey, that's what the majority of people want to call you, but like, I've created things more than just art. But then again, you can call all creation art anyway, can't you?
just a blessing to have uh, people supporting the work and uh, getting out there. No matter what anything looks like on, on face value, you can't assume what the artist was thinking. I really like to hear people's interpretation and I and there are people who have to be able to create their own story and I think like I don't want to take that away from people. When someone looks at my own work and sees something completely new and different that I didn't think of, I think that's amazing. I'm my own worst critic and, and my own competition, you know, because I'm always challenging myself. I'm a huge fan of a friendly competition. I love it. I think it's great. I think it helps everybody to thrive. And when I see somebody doing something, even if it's like one of those moments where I'm like, damn, I wish I thought of that first. I still welcome that and think that's a good thing. That stuff rubs off, you know, when you, when you hang out with people better than you, even if they don't show you anything. I like to think like I'm the best, but I keep it to myself, you know? You gotta take it serious first if you want other people to take you seriously. That's all my competition ever did for the past decade, you know? Is say that they were good and people believe it. I, I, I do it the hard way and really didn't get me, get me anywhere. Now, I'm the shit talker extraordinaire. Like I said, talent is only 50% of it. Exposure and just being in the right place at the right time is the other 50%. Accomplishment, I think it's a whole career. There's really not a whole lot at this point that's original. Everything is kind of just like a culmination of lots of influences and there really is nothing super, super original anymore. I think there's feelings both like inside the community, like fr from artists and from people outside the community, people who don't look at art or think about art, that sort of like art, art is dead. Um, like I think outsiders, non-artists or people who are not into art, you know, why look at art when you have HD movies, you could pull out your phone, you know, turn on your Xbox or whatever, you know, why look at a painting? Like it seems like a waste of time. This generation is a bunch of creative folks, and I salute them for doing what they really, really want to do. It's one of those love-hate relationships, I guess, that it's a necessary evil to be involved in this like idea of an art scene because it does keep you heavily involved in the community and projects and things that go on. You always can find folks who are talented, but just don't have the vision. Like There's trends, whether I like the idea of that or not, there's, that's a reality. You know, there's trends of what people are doing and I feel like being a part of it is better than, than not. Either you're gonna blend in with everyone else or by the time you really like master that trend, that's already old. You and your work is very ephemeral and it's temporary and it changes and it's just how life is, you know? You could take that trend and fuck with it and make it something completely different, you know, and turn everyone else's shit on their heads. All my stuff for the last three years, I always, I always throw my boy in there that, that passed away, Ouch, Ouch Juan, M.I.A., AKA Scott Rotten. He was a beast, the Cobra Commander, and he was an MC, he was really ill. And that's why I'm doing this right here for him, you know, he's, he was the Cobra, because he spit venom. He was, he was really nasty, you know? So I, I keep him alive with, with every piece I do. I feel like there's always this like hope for for beauty, for uh, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, right? Like uh, for love and for this um, I don't know communication with people. I've seen a lot of people in and out of jail, or people get killed for senseless things. That's where my whole kind of message comes from. Like, hey, listen, I gotta somehow motivate people to do better. There's like some kind of just a message that I'm not trying to necessarily make public to the world. Just I needed to get it out of myself. Like, who am I to tell you that just because you're an artist means you have to have a message behind your work? That's not who you are. 
Like, what drives you to do work is what drives you to do work. What drives me to do work is just happens to be the fact that I have a message I want to get out. That's totally okay. And sometimes just things are really cool to look at and, not, and nothing more. It's more about looking good on the body, I think, before the meaning. Art is not what you think it is. Art is what I see. You're really inspired when you inspire someone else enough to inspire the next person, if that makes sense. Art is expression, life, death, mistakes, learning, effort, trying, lying, breaking, selling, making, showing, sharing, telling, being. Field, football
that no one is not making things, that there's always things. I started out ECO, and somebody told me I had an H. Maybe there's some poetic uh, sorrow to it, or maybe it was just simple. <laughs>